So for the 21st lesson of class and the second lesson in ethics, we learned about moral absolutism versus moral relativism, or in some people's cases, moral absolutism and moral relativism, which brings us to the obvious question is, what's moral absolutism and what's moral relativism? Now, moral absolutism is the ethical belief that there are absolute standards against which moral questions can be judged and that certain actions are right or wrong regardless of the context of the act. So for instance, stealing is wrong. That's it, it's wrong. Uh, you, can, you couldn't say, well, hey, I have starving children and I had to steal bread to feed them. Nope, it is wrong. So when you take an absolutist stance, you're gonna be using words like always, never, 100% of the time, that kind of thing, very black and white. Whereas moral relativism is the view that moral judgments are true or false only relative to some particular standpoint. So for instance, you might say, well, you know, it's not ethical here in this country, but in that part of the world, they do things differently. Or, hey, a couple hundred years ago, uh, that was uh, ethical. It's not ethical in modern times, that sort of thing. And that there's no standpoint that's uniquely privileged above all others. So this is more of a shades of gray, it depends, whereas this is a very black and white view. Now, absolute, thinking is influenced very much by this philosopher Immanuel Kant when he uh, came up with his categorical imperative. And the categorical imperative was that morality is dictated on these maxims, these rules, and that when everybody follows these maxims, it becomes universal law. There is an absolute right, there's an absolute wrong. And he's very influential on Western thought. So people who think along absolutist lines were heavily influenced by Immanuel Kant. And um, when I ask people the question, so do you feel yourself to be more from an absolute point of view or more from a relativist point of view? The most common answer by a mile is, you know, it depends. You know, I have to, you have to tell me the issue. I don't know. I really, I got to keep an open mind. So um, I tested that and we did two activities. The first being a coin flip where you flipped a coin. And if you won, you had to take an issue and give it an absolute uh, take on it. And if you lost, you had to give, um, more one that was relative and then the time left over uh, you got to give your thoughts and we circulated around the room to talk to different people and then we sat down and created ethical policy not one that's grounded per se in, in economics or uh, whether it's the political polit politically correct thing to do in terms of pure ethics what would be ethical policy so for instance if you were a lawmaker using ethics as your guide what would you come up with so the 16 issues we looked at was welfare and charity policies. Uh, what is our ethical duty to the needy, if anything? And um, again, I don't want to give too much of myself here because I want you thinking for yourself. But let's be honest, we have a lot of homeless people, needy people, hungry people. What should be done? What's an ethical policy in regards to um, helping them? The second issue, addictive substances. Why are some substances legal and others not? Um, you know, what's the ethical means of regulating them? And obviously this gets into drug legalization and, you know, why is alcohol legal and advertised even though it's very destructive, this kind of thing. Third issue, abortion. What is ethically correct in terms of this issue? Very contentious issue. Very contentious. And um, what is the ethical way of looking at things? Is the mother the chief concern? Is the fetus the chief concern? Is the ability to have choice in the society the chief concern? Um, I don't know. You know, uh, leave that up to you. Issue four, medically assisted suicide. Is it ethical to allow people to choose to end their lives? And again, people are saying, how can you punish somebody who kills themselves? Well, you get your insurance policy nullified, for instance. Um, you are uh, suffering needlessly. If you know you are going to die in a month, but that month is going to be sheer pain, is it ethical to allow people to do this? Where do we draw the line? Is it a slippery slope? Again, I don't know. This is for you to figure this out. Uh, issue five, animal rights. What are ethical policies, if anything, if any policy, to protect animals? And obviously this gets into hunting and uh, meat consumption and uh, domestic pets compared to other animals, this sort of thing. Issue six, environmentalism. What is our ethical duty, if any, to our planet? 
And uh, this gets into environmental policy and recycling and what's mandated and uh, emissions from cars and that kind of thing. Issue seven is rehabilitation of criminals. Uh, what are ethical policies in dealing with incarcerated individuals? So rehabilitation is just one of the philosophies behind punishing people. Uh, that's one we're saying, well, we're going to you know, teach you how to get back into society and help you with whatever deficiencies. That's not the only uh, philosophy, deterrence, making somebody an example so other people don't commit the crime, or retribution, punishment for punishment's sakes, or inca incapacitation. Let's just take you out. Let's just get you away. Um, so what's the most ethical way to go about doing this? And obviously this gets into, you know, property crimes versus violent crimes and motive and a little taste of criminal justice for you and the philosophy behind criminal justice. Issue seven, population control. Uh, what ethical policies, what are ethical policies in regards to this? And again, you can look at world population. Throughout time, it's fairly steady and then boom, in my lifetime, and I'm not all that old, three billion people have been put on this earth. Um, if we don't do something about it, could we have a real mess on our hands? If you learned about Thomas Malthus and his predictions of what would happen if a world population got out of control, um, who mandates this? Um, how would you go about doing this? Is it ethical to even consider such a thing? Are we getting into eugenics and some pretty dark stuff? So that's issue eight. Issue nine, medical care. What are ethical policies in regards to medical care? Should it be universal? Now, obviously, you can say, well, everybody should get health care. Well, the obvious question, who's going to pay for it? Um, then the ethical conundrums, um, if it's everybody has free access to any medical care they want, a 97-year-old walks in and needs to have a million-dollar procedure to live six months. Okay, do you want to have that happen? At what point do we draw the line? And you can go, well, 87, 77, 67. What kind of individual is it? Is it somebody of importance? So these are the sorts of things I want you to talk about in regards to issue nine. Issue 10, immigration. What are ethical policies regarding this topic? Um, obviously, we're getting into some very uh, current events, topical stuff here. But again, in America, what should be the policy in regards to immigrants? Issue 11, homosexuality. What are ethical policies regarding the rights of homosexual individuals? from marriage, from how you interpret the 14th Amendment in terms of anti-discrimination statutes, that sort of thing. And oftentimes I hear people's take on this hinge upon whether they feel homosexuality is a choice or whether it is a biological mechanism. And um, we'll talk about this a little bit as we talk. And number 12, Affirmative action. Now, most people were not uh, aware of affirmative action because in this state, we don't have it. It is outlawed. And it's this notion of attempting to diversify uh, workplaces and college campuses and that sort of thing by bringing um, minority groups to those places, even if they might not have the um, requirements needed for other people. Now, is that um, ethical, ethical policy? An unethical policy. Issue 13, freedom of speech. What are the ethical limits, if any, to our First Amendment? And at what point do we draw the lines? We're talking censorship. We are talking um, uh, people on college campuses, they have very unpopular uh, extreme views. Do we let them on the campus? That kind of thing. Uh, issue 14, prostitution. And yeah, you got to you got a pie chart. Okay, that was a tough visual considering it's school. But what's ethical, what's not ethical? And I put this pie chart here because in some places in the world it's legal, and other places in the world it's illegal, and it's split fairly, you know, fairly even. Um, what should be done in regards to uh, this issue? Issue 15 privacy rights and limits. What are ethical policies regarding? your privacy and obviously your internet usage, um, security compared to individual liberty. What do we value more? How should we uh, look at um, government, uh, looking at our emails and whatnot, that kind of thing. And the final issue we looked at are our exclusive clubs. Uh, what are ethical policies? Could clubs ethically be able to not include certain groups of people? And the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts came up quite a bit and saying, well, um, is the Boy Scouts um, not letting girls in exclusionary or 
Uh, I just want a men's club. I don't want women here um, in terms of golf clubs. At what point is it ethical? At what point is it unethical? Now, these are some heavy questions. And in listening to people over the years, uh, people do get passionate. They get, um, you know, emotional sometimes. But again, friendly reminder, as we go through ethics, these ground rules that I hope I taught you the lesson before, I just want to remind you, we're going to disagree. It's a good thing. Tack the premise with logic and evidence. Do not attack the character or the individual. Talking louder, faster, and swearing a whole bunch just makes you look like a simpleton. It makes you look ignorant. Don't be that person. Bring passion. Bring conviction. Okay, but using only emotion doesn't cut it. Be open-minded, and I forced you to speak to different people by design. I don't want an echo chamber. Echo chambers are simple. Being able to debate somebody who disagrees with you, that's where philosophy lies and reputable sources. Use them. Shoot down disreputable sources. So a uh, very interesting couple days, and I loved listening to your conversations, and hopefully um, you're able to establish your personal ethics, whether you are more absolute in some areas or more relative in other areas, and being able to think through ethical issues through those two lenses. So thank you for watching.